Hello grade 11s and welcome to this lesson on types of force. We exert and experience different forces every day. These forces help us in many ways but they can also be dangerous. In this lesson we define and represent force. We look at their effects, their classification and measurement. Let's join Nelly who will help us with this. Now, you should have heard about forces in physical sciences before. For example, I'm sure you remember that all objects on Earth are subject to the force of gravity. You should also be familiar with the forces of attraction and repulsion between the poles of two magnets and the electrostatic force that exists between charged objects. Keeping what you already know about forces in mind, let's look at some examples of forces in action a little more carefully. I'd like us to see if these examples can tell us exactly what force is, scientifically speaking. What are the things that are similar in all these examples? Do you notice that there are always at least two objects or bodies interacting in each of these examples? Do you also see that in all the examples there is either a pull in a specific direction or a push in a specific direction? Considering these observations, do you think that you could try to formulate a definition for force? Thank you Nelly. Now we must remember that force has two important properties. Force has magnitude, which means there are stronger and weaker forces, and a force always acts in a particular direction. This means that force is a vector quantity, so we can represent it with a vector. A vector is an arrow. The length of the arrow represents the magnitude of the vector quantity. A longer arrow represents a stronger force than a shorter arrow and the orientation of the line and direction of the arrowhead represent the direction of the vector quantity. Forces interest us because of what they can do. Let's join Ellie again. Force can accelerate things. The greater the force the cyclist exerts on the bike pedals, the greater his acceleration. Force also slows things down. When the cyclist applies the brakes, he uses the frictional force between the tires and the ground to stop his bike. It takes force to change the direction of motion. This sportsman is continually swinging this hammer on a chain around in a circle. If the chain breaks or if he lets go, the hammer carries on moving in a straight line because there is no longer a turning force acting on it. Force can also change the shape of things. Forces can squash, stretch, bend, and even break objects. Thank you, Nelly. Now, what do all these effects have in common? They all involve a change in the magnitude or direction of the body's motion, even if only for a short time. So all our examples involve a change in the body's velocity, which is acceleration. In everyday language, acceleration only means to speed up, but in science, acceleration means any change in velocity to speed up, slow down, or change direction. Acceleration, in scientific terms, is always caused by a force. There are many kinds of forces. Let's name a few. The pull force inside a rope is called tension. Magnets exert forces on one another, called magnetic force. The Earth pulls all objects to itself with a gravitational force called the object's weight. Electric charges exert forces on one another, called electrostatic force. Objects which rub against one another exert friction forces on one another. Many structures experience compression forces. and a surface supports an object which rests on it with an upward push called the normal force. These are a lot of different kinds of forces. Let's ask Nelly how we can categorize these forces into groups and how to measure them. Now, force can be divided into two main groups. 
the forces that we recapped at the beginning of the lesson, magnetism, gravity, and electrostatic forces, are called non-contact forces. These forces act over a distance, which means that objects don't have to touch each other to experience a force. This type of force normally has a force field associated with it. The second group of forces are called contact forces. These include a direct push or pull, frictional forces, and air resistance. Here the bodies or objects that are interacting physically have to touch each other in order to exert a force on each other. Well, I hope that you're starting to get a pretty good idea of what force is. And if it is not crystal clear yet, don't worry, it will become clearer as we work through more examples. Next, I would like to show you how we measure force. In other words, how we find the magnitude or the size of the force exerted. We measure the magnitude of force using a spring balance. The stretch of a spring is proportional to the force acting on it. In other words, a spring stretches more when a larger force acts on it than it does when a smaller force acts on it. This is the principle on which the spring balance is designed. The SI unit of force is the Newton to honor the work done by Sir Isaac Newton in the latter part of the 17th century. So this spring balance measures the size of a force in Newtons. The reading shows us that the apple exerts a force of two Newtons. Let's go to a school playground and measure the forces in a tug of war using a couple of spring balances. Shoo, guys, you look like you're really enjoying your game. Okay, do you guys want to know the science behind the game that you play? Okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to measure the force with which you're pulling against each other, okay? Uh -huh. We're going to take the two guys, okay? What's your name? Zueli. Zueli and? Tapelo. Tapelo, okay. You guys grab each side of this. Okay. And now you're going to pull against the spring balance. It looks as if Tapelo and Zueli are both pulling with a force of 50 Newton. Okay guys, now pull harder and let's see what happens. Now you're both pulling with a force of 70 Newton. But that's where we have to leave it for today. Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, especially the task video. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.